So I'm really glad to be back and we're on our second message with our series entitled, what's the title of our series? It is God Answers and we, and we are on our second question. But before we start and go with the, with the message, let me just pray for everyone. Let's just uh, surrender this time to the Lord. So let's all bow down our heads. Let's all pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for this evening that you have given us to gather together as one church to study your word. And Father, I surrender myself to you. I am but your servant. Allow my words only to come from you. May we really hear from you in a clear way. Free us from any distraction that we may have, from any concern that we may have in our house, in our work, in our personal life. Allow us, Lord, to just see you and just revel in your beauty and in your love. Thank you, Lord, for this evening. I surrender the balance of the service to you and all these things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as I start with a message, I want to ask you guys this question. Have you ever wondered if something was really true? Have you ever looked at something and thought, Totoo ba yan? Totoo ba yung promotion na yan? Palawan, papunta ng Palawan, 5,000 pesos lang. Ano yun, nakatayo ako sa, sa airplane the whole entire time? Totoo ba yung buy one, take five? Or have you ever seen something and really thought, is this fake or is this original or is this genuine? I want to put you guys to a test. Again, I love test. So I'll be showing you two pictures. I want to test if you can easily identify if this item is a fake item or a genuine item. Okay. So I'll show you two pictures and then let me know if you think the left picture is fake or is the right picture fake. Okay. So first item, genuine or fake Rolex watch. So ano sa tingin nyo yung peke dyan? Ano dyan yung Bolex? So is it the left picture or the right picture? So sino nagsabi ang original ay yung right? Sino nagsabi yung original yung left? Okay, so medyo konti lang. Okay, the, actually, the right one is the real Rolex watch. I think you can see that from the writing, right? Mas makapal and mas maganda yung, yung numbers. Next, genuine or fake converse. Guys, you should be able to, to identify this. Which among this shoe do you think is the fake or the original one? Is it the one on the right or is it the one on the left? Ano dyan yung original? Okay, lahat nagsasabi right? Yes. That's the original, the genuine one, and then the fake one is the left. Do you guys agree? Yes. Actually, the real one is the one on the left, and the fake one is the one on the right. Bakit kaya? Okay, actually, mas madumi yung fake, kasi yung fake mabilis mag-yellow, if, if uh, napansin nyo, but uh, baka hindi lang kita sa projector. Next item, genuine or fake Apple cable? I think this is very easy. Hint. Just try to observe the copper wire. Okay, so ano sa tingin nyo yung genuine dyan? Is it the left one or the right one? Left is what? Left is the? Fake? Tama? And then the right one is the? Genuine one. Correct. Okay, so the left one is the fake cable and the right one is the genuine cable. Mas maganda yung pagagawa ng copper wire. And then, sec and then second to the last item. Ladies. You should be able to identify this, huh? Genuine or fake Prada bag? Okay, anong fake dyan? Para sa aming mga guys, pareho lang yan. So is it the left picture or the right picture? What do you think is the fake Prada bag? Okay, ladies, ano sa tingin nyo? Ano yung fake? Ladies? Wow, sure kayo? Okay, ayun yung mag-call a friend, sure? Okay, so right, you are right. Okay, the fake one is the one, galing nyo ah. Okay, the fake one is the one on the right. And then lastly, genuine or fake iPhone. Are you guys ready? Okay, genuine or fake iPhone. Is this a genuine or fake iPhone? Ano sa tingin nyo? Hindi nyo nakita? Zoom in ko ah. Okay, hindi nyo nakita? <laughs> It's an iPhone. Okay, so definitely that is a fake. You know, guys, what's, 
why am I sharing all of these things? You know, in our world right now, there are so many fake items. Not only items, sometimes there are fake ideologies, fake teachings, as I mentioned, fake advertisement, fake promotions, and we've experienced maybe buying something that we thought is original, but in the end, it was fake. And because we're surrounded by these kinds of things, sometimes we're very skeptical. Sometimes we immediately think, is this really true? You know, is this item really true? Is this promotion really true? Will I really lose weight in 10 seconds? All right, may mga ganun eh. Okay, lose 10 pounds in 10 seconds. Some, 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 something like that. That's why we're very skeptical. And even if there is something that sounds logical and looks real, we still question it. That's why, friends, when we talk about the Bible, there are individuals who really question if the Bible is real or not. They're skeptical as well. Is this really God's word? That's why this evening, we would try to answer this question. Is everything written in the Bible true? Have you ever asked this question? Have you ever asked, is this really God's word? Do I really need to obey everything that is written on the Bible? And there's a need for us to really study this because if the Bible is not true, then friends, you know what we are doing today is nothing but just, you know, a gathering of, of singles just wanting to get to know one another, right? Or there's no, even, there's no point even in meeting every Saturday if the Bible is not true. But if the Bible is indeed true, that's why there's a need for us to know the answer of this question, then there's a need for us to obey and know what God has written in His Word. And in our world right now, there's also a need for us to know the answer because we need to be able to know how to defend this question. Because a lot of people are asking this question, is everything written in the Bible true? Is it truly God's Word? That's why remember this. Your belief in the authority, clarity, inerrancy, and necessity of the Bible will determine the course of your life. If you indeed believe 100% in your heart that it is God's word, then you will obey. That you see that these are words that are from God. These are commands that are from God. And I want to honor God. Therefore, I want to obey God. But again, if you see the Bible as just merely another book, then, you know, you read it, you enjoy it, and then that's it, right? That's why it will determine the course of your life. That's why when I was thinking about this question, is everything in the, written in the Bible true? I suddenly realized that there's actually a deeper question that we have to answer. Because sometimes we ask quest, a certain question, but there is a deeper question that we actually have in our heart. For example, have you ever asked this question? How do I know if this is true love? Minsan, kahit walang boyfriend, girlfriend, tinatanong yan. Okay? How do I know if this is true love? Wala pa nga. Right? Some, sometimes we, 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 we ask that question where, where we like someone. If we are in a relationship with someone, we ask this question. But if you would really think about it, there's a deeper question that we are trying to ask. Let me name a few. Maybe we are really questioning, how do I know? If this is true love, when I have given my heart to so many people already. Or maybe you're really asking, how do I know if this is really true love when sometimes I don't really feel like loving him or her? Minsan wala yung feeling, minsan wala yung spark. But that's actually the question that you want to be answered. Or maybe your, your deep question is, how do I know if this is really true love and it's time to ask her to marry me? And take note, it says there, it's time to ask her, not time to ask him, okay, to, to marry me. <laughs> Maybe this is the deeper question that you want to really answer. That's why when we ask the question, is everything written in the Bible true, there might be a deeper set of questions that you want to answer, a deeper set of questions that you want to answer. So that's why while I was thinking about this question, these are the deeper questions that I believe we are trying to answer. Is everything written in the Bible true? Is everything written in the Bible true? And is there really absolute truth? Is everything written in the Bible, is it really God's word, despite being written by just men? 
Or is it really God's word? Is it everything written in the Bible? Is it really free from errors? Is it really perfect? Because if we are talking about God, God is perfect. Therefore, his word should be perfect as well. That's why this evening, we would try to answer these three questions. I would tackle the first two, and then Sherwin will tackle the last question, the hardest question of all. And sa kanya napigayan din, di naman, okay? And we would uh, share with you what we have learned through the studying of this message. So let's go with the first question. The first question is, is everything written in the Bible true? Is there really absolute truth? So there's two sides. There's one side that believes there is absolute truth. There's an absolute absolute standard, an absolute rule that we believe that killing is wrong. We believe that stealing is wrong. We believe that lying is is wrong, okay? There's an absolute moral standard. But there's that other side that believes that truth is what? Truth is relative. You might think that killing is wrong, but because truth is relative for me, it's not necessarily wrong all the time. If I have to do it to protect my family, I don't think it's wrong. You might think that stealing is wrong. But for me, truth is relative. And I don't think that stealing is wrong because it's just a way to balance economy. Or to steal from the rich so that I could give to the poor. Or some of you may be thinking, truth is relative. And I don't think that lying is is wrong because sometimes I have to lie to protect the person that I, I love. Okay, that's the other side of the spectrum. That's why if you believe that truth is relative, can you just imagine the type of society that we will have? You know, everyone will just do whatever they feel they have to do. They will just do whatever they want to do, whatever gives them pleasure. There is no standard. There is no moral standard. And friends, that's why we have laws, right? To govern us, to help us live with order and to respect one another. Because if we would just do whatever we want to do, then, you know, I would just decide to, to, to kill someone. And for me, that's okay. Because truth is relative. Can you imagine the type of society that we will have? That's why if you believe the truth is relative, can I ask you this question? Do you lock your doors at night? Yes. Why do you guys lock your door at night? For what? For safety. Right? For protection. Because for you, you believe that if you close your door, you will protect your family from someone coming in at 3 a.m., stealing something, or maybe hurting your family. Right? That is what you believe. That's why a lot of us, even though we think that truth is relative, we would close the door. Because most of us understand that it is wrong to steal, it is wrong to kill Someone, even though you don't study that in, in, in your university, in your college, there's something in you that is telling you that is wrong. That's a moral standard that's, that is wrong to take someone else's life. But if truth is relative, then you should not care if I go inside your house and then steal from you. Because for me, that is okay. It might not be okay for you, but for me, that is okay. If your view is truth is Relative. Another, another illustration, gravity. For, for those who believe the truth is relative, some of you may not believe that there is gravity. But no matter if you don't believe that there is gravity, what is the truth? What is the absolute truth? There is gravity. So if you don't believe that there is gravity, you go to a 10-story building, and then you jump, and then what will happen? You will fall. You will die. That's why, friends, the problem is not gravity. The problem is we choose to believe what we want to believe. That's why people will decide that I don't want that absolute truth because I don't want to be under a set of rules that will restrict what I want to do. I want to have that freedom that I can do whatever I want. I can do whatever will give me pleasure without thinking if it will hurt someone else or if it will dishonor God. That's why they want to believe that truth is relative. But there is that absolute truth that we are to follow. That's why there are laws. And even if you would look at the laws, it is connected to God's word. Have you ever observed that? Have you ever, have you ever read the Ten Commandments? Right? There's thou shall not kill. 
Thou shall not murder. Thou shall not covet. These are basic rules that we know is wrong and we know is part of the law here in our country, right? Because there is that moral standard that we know it's wrong to take someone else's life. But some of you may be thinking, okay, Mark, I believe there is that absolute truth. There is that absolute moral standard that I should follow. But this is my question. Okay, there is that absolute truth, but is the Bible the absolute truth? That's why that question is related to the second question. Is everything written in the Bible true? Is it really possible that this is God's word despite being written by men? Because if we are able to prove, now follow me with this, if we are able to prove that the Bible is God's word, then it is the absolute truth. Because it comes from from absolutely the highest being that we know. That's why the Bible will always claim its own authority because it, it cannot claim someone else's authority. Because it is the highest authority. Do you follow me? That's why when we say absolute, nothing is higher than you. The Bible cannot say, I claim my authority from the president of the Philippines. Because God is above the president of the Philippines. If there is someone else that claims his authority above God, then God is not God. Right? Because there is someone above him. But if we are able to prove that this, that the Bible is really God's word, then it is the absolute Truth. That's why we would, if you would look at 1 Thessalonians 2.13, it says this. Can everyone read? Verse 13. For this reason. The word of God, which also performs its work in you who believe. And this was Paul talking, and he was confirming, he was claiming that though you heard that these are the words of men, but it says there, but for what it really is, it is what it is, the word of God. But how how did that happen, Mark? How did Paul's word become the word of God? That's why if you would go to 2 Peter 1, 2, it says there, For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by whom? Moved by The the Holy Spirit. They were able to speak God's word because they were moved by the Holy Spirit, because God inspired them to say His words, to write His Words. That's why even if you would go to 2 Timothy 3.16, this is what it says. All scripture is inspired by God for it's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. In other translations, it would say there in verse 16, all scripture is inspired or God breathed. Okay? That these are the actual words of God as he inspired men to write his words. And take note, verse 16 starts with what word? It starts with the word? All. All, Right? Not just 2 Timothy, not just the New Testament, but the entire Bible is inspired by God. It's from God. That's why I like what Warren Wiersbe said. He said this, We must not think of inspiration the way the world thinks when it says Shakespeare was certainly an inspired writer. What we mean by biblical inspiration is the supernatural influence of the Holy Spirit on the Bible's writers, which guaranteed that what they wrote was accurate and trustworthy. Our God loves us so much, and He is not a God who will lie. That's why He will tell us what is the truth. And the truth is something that you can find. The absolute truth is something that you can find in His Word. Okay? As He used men to write His Word. So as we answer these two questions, is everything written in the Bible true? Is there really absolute truth? Yes, it is God's Word. And there's that absolute truth because He is the highest being, despite being written by men. That's why even in the Old Testament, you would see their statements, thus says the, what? Thus says the Lord. That these are words coming from God. And when you read that statement, thus says the Lord, it actually means it is like an edict of a king. During that time when a king would say something, it is something that you cannot challenge. It is something that you cannot question because of the authority of the king. 
And that is what it actually means as well. When God said, thus says the Lord, it is not something that you can question. Because these are the words of God. The one who created everything that you see. The one who created you. Our divine Savior and Lord. And the Bible declares that it is the word of God 4,000 times. It has always claimed its own authority. That's why if you would look at the evidence on why the Bible is God's word, we would see, number one, that the Bible claims its absolute authority. Because again, it cannot use someone else to claim for its authority because it is the highest authority. It is already God claiming his own authority. Second, the Bible is historically and scientifically correct. And later, Sherwin will explain how the Bible is historically and scientifically correct. And thirdly, the Bible has numerous fulfilled prophecies. Prophecies that are impossible. That has a 1 to 1,000 probability. 1 in 1,000 probability or maybe even 1 to 100,000 probability. And lastly, that the Bible changes lives. I guess this is one of the biggest evidences that the Bible is really God's word. You know, that when someone reads the Bible, he's enlightened and he understands God. And somehow there's a change that happens with that person. So we have numerous testimonies of someone learning about God, changing his ways from being someone who was, who was previously a drug addict, previously a drunkard, or a womanizer and all of those things. But he was changed as he learned about how God loved him and what Jesus did on the cross. Because that is how powerful his word is. But some of you may be still thinking, okay, Mark, if it's God's word, why do I see some inconsistencies? Why do I see some errors? Again, if God, if this is God's word, it should be perfect, right? Because it is, we're talking about God, the perfect being. That's why we have this third question. Is it really free from errors? And I will ask our dear brother to answer this question. So, ladies and gentlemen, Sherwin. Hello. Oh, hello. Good evening. Oh. Hello, magandang gabi, everyone. So, it's nice to see you again after two weeks ng reunion. So, I'd just like to continue yung sinabi ni Mark that uh, we are now on the third question that is everything written in the Bible true? And is if it really true, is it really free from errors? So, when we talk about the Bible is free from errors, first, kailangan natin i-define that. What do we mean by free from errors? Diba? Kasi maybe of all of us, we have a different idea of when we say free from errors. Maybe some of you is talking about dapat walang misspelled no word. Maybe some of you, yung mga grammar Nazi, yung mga dapat, oh, dapat the is and the are and the, diba? dapat magkakasunod, the subject and verb agreement. No? Diba? So when we talk about the... Bible is free from error, we're not talking about that. We're talking about two things. That the Bible does not contradict any facts or truth that we have right now. So everything that we read sa Bible natin, yung mga facts at mga truths doon, it does not contradict yung meron tayo ngayon. Secondly, that the Bible always tells the truth and will always tell the truth in everything it says. So hindi pwede na sabihin natin yung Bible, yung, ano yan, encyclopedia, ng, encyclopedia of everything. Na, ah, sandal, kukuha ko ng kondo, saan sa Bible yan? Hindi siya ganon. Pag wala sa Bible, sasabihin nyo, ah, mali yung Bible. Kasi hindi kompleto, kasi wala siya na sinasabi tungkol sa pagkuha ng kondo. That's not what we are not talking about the Bible. When we talk about the Bible, we are talking about its content. We are talking about its message. So the Bible is really free from errors. And yun tutukasan natin. So, I want you to focus on me kasi medyo, uh, we have a lot of ano, things to talk about. And for us to first start this one, we need to talk about the origin and the evidences of the Bible. So, Mark, discuss. Gusto ko yung sinabi kanina ni Mark sa simula na that if the Bible is true, we know that God is true. If the Bible is perfect, we know God is perfect because the Bible is His Word. And that's exactly what we're going to talk, to talk about the origin. So yung origin ng Bible. So binanggit ni Mark kanina yung 2 Timothy 3.16-17 that all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness so that the man of God may be adequate, 
equipped for every good work. And the word is inspired by, sabi nga ni Mark is God breathed, di ba? And that's the same picture of blowing, breathed out. And that's the same picture nung maala na sa Genesis 3 when God created Adam. And he breathed, he breathed his life of breath, breath to Adam. Sorry, sorry, tank twister kasi siya. So, the life Adam had came from the breath of God. And that's exa- exactly the same picture. And if maalala nyo the, the Pentecost when the apostle received the Holy Spirit, when you see the, the Spirit in the Bible, it, the Greek word always will bring you the word uh, breath or air. So when we said that all scripture is God breath, ibig sabihin si God, then the Spirit is on His scripture, on His word. And not just some, but all. So God is the ultimate author of the Bible. Na prove ni Mark yan. Pinakita ni Mark kanina sa Bible that God is the ultimate author of the Bible. And the writers are men. Okay? And secondly, Mark, sinabi niya rin that God spoke to men. God spoke to the prophets and the, spop, and the prophets spoke to the people. And God spoke through men. And sabi dyan, for no prophecy was ever made by the act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. In Hebrews 1.3, we can read that the sun radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And He sustains everything by the mighty power of His command. We're talking, sino yung sinasabing the sun dyan? It's Jesus. We can see here from this verse that Jesus is the full and complete revelation of God Himself. That Jesus radiates God's own glory, and the character of Jesus Christ is the very character of God Himself. And we all know, when we're going to read mula sa Matthew hanggang sa Revelation, we are talking about the life of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ's birth, death on the cross, resurrection, and His church. The whole New Testament is the full revelation of God Himself. So our basis of the Bible's truthfulness is, again, God himself. So in Titus 1, 1 to 2, we can read that Paul, a servant of God, and then he continue on the end part, that their knowledge of the truth that leads to godliness in the hope of eternal life, eternal life which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time. So we are sure that si God, hindi siya nagsisinungaling. Hindi sasabihin ni God na pag p.m. punta ako tapos dating siya 7 p.m. Guilty. So, <laughs> so hindi ganun yung God natin. When God said, this going to happen, it will happen. When God's promise to us, it will receive the reward, we will receive the reward. Our basis of the Bible's perfection is again, God Himself. In Matthew 5.48, Jesus said, Therefore, you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is. Perfect. It's important to keep in mind that your belief about the Bible determines your belief about God. If you believe that God is true, then you will believe that the Bible is true. If you believe that God is perfect, you believe the Bible is perfect. Pero, wait, sasabihin nila, Mer, uh, gets ko yan, bro, sige, uh, okay yan, nabasa, nabasa ko sa Bible. Pero ano ako eh, Logical and critical type of person. I need evidences. So we will talk about the evidences. Gusto nyo. So uh, kindly uh, help me bear me focus on the next slides because we're talking about a lot of evidences and this is just some of the many evidences we have in the Bible. Okay, let's start. When was the Bible, when the Bible was written? Okay, we have here a timeline sa Bible uh, the dates, again, are approximately, close approximation of the, created by the Bible scholars who thoroughly study the Bible and chronological order. So they, they dated that the creation was 4000 BC and up to today. So we are here, 2017. And you can see on the middle part, that's the time where the Bible was written. So when you zoom natin yan, zoom, makikita natin na 1400 BC, Moses started to write the first five books. And then the last book in the Bible is the Revelation 
which is sinulat nung 90 AD. And that's a 1,500 span of years. 66 books written sa loob ng 1,500 years. Okay, just, just remember that. Babalikan natin yan. And then let's start and let's continue talking about where the Bible was written. So makikita natin dyan that the uh, Hebrew and Ephesians sinulat sa, sa Rome, Corinthians in Ephesus, and Romans in Corinth, the Revelation in, in Patmos, and many books were written in Israel. Actually, a lot of portion ng Bible natin were written in Israel. And the five books were written in Mount Sinai, sa bundok. And then Ezekiel and Daniel were written in Babylonian, and the Galatians were written from Antioch. So, imagine nyo, kanina, different time, 1,500 years, the Old Testament was written for the first 1,000 years. The New Testament was written for the next 50 years after Jesus Christ's death. And here we are, the author is writing the Bible in different places, in different location, different time, different places. Let's proceed. Let's consider this example. Sino sila? Si Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They are the author of the, the gospel. They are the writer of the gospel. So Matthew, we can read in the Bible that he's a tax collector. And Mark, actually, si Mark hindi makikita sa Bible ko ano yung occupation niya before. When I try to research Mark, wala akong makita. Ang naging nilalagay nila unknown. So sabi ko, si Mark, ordinary man. Ordinary man si Mark. Who become a disciple of Jesus. And Matthew and John become the apostle of Jesus. And John is a fisherman. While Luke, si Luke naman is a physician. Doktor. So si mga doktor dito, si Doc Luke yan. So actually si Luke is not a Jew. He's a Greek physician. And sa kabilang kolo, makikita natin yung date where they, read, they write the, the gospel. So si Matthew, si Mark, almost same sila nung sinulat yung gospel, around 50 years after the Jesus Christ's birth. And here's Luke writing down 60 years after life, uh, Jesus Christ's birth. And John, sinulat ni John, not John uh, sinulat ni John 80 years after the event of Jesus Christ's birth. During that time, actually, nung sinulat ni John yung book of John, the Gospel of John, nasa matanda na siya, old age na siya. Imagine ninyo, an old man writing down a history of Jesus which happened 50 years ago. And if you're going to read the book of John, makikita nyo kung gano'n siya ka-detail. Makikita nyo on gaano yung heart ni John dun, And how he laid down everything just for us to know that the Jesus is the Son of God. An old man, around 86 years old na siya dyan. And then writing down, something happens 50 years ago. 66 books, 39 writers. Write down the Bible on different time frame, on different location, and talking about the same subject. In 2 Timothy 3.15, Paul said to Timothy, You have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. If you're going to read the whole Bible, actually pinag-uusapan doon, is God's amazing grace saving man from his sins through a Messiah who is Jesus Christ. That's the whole theme of the Bible. And 39 writers writing in a different time, a different location, talking about the same subject. That's impossible. That's humanly impossible. Actually tayo, example, mag, uh, we all witness the sabi natin na lang example na lang natin the yung pagkaka-winner ni President Duterte. Imagine niyo tayo at 85, scattered all around the Philippines. Ang grupo nito sa Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. And then the Luzon will start writing about nung na-witness nila nung pagkakapanalo ni President Duterte. And then five years from now, this group from Visayas will write down the same thing. And from this group will write on 15 years after they start. Believe me, pag kinumpahil natin yung pinagsusulat natin, there will always be contradiction sa bawat isa. Iba-ibang idea. And that's how amazing God is. Because 66 books, 39 writers, without contradiction. If you're going to read the Genesis, walang sinasabi si Genesis that will contradict the Revelation, which is written 1,500 years after. And that's the same thing, vice versa. So that's the first evidence 
di ba? We're talking about the, the Bible itself, the history of the Bible itself. And let's talk about the prophecies. Sinabi nga ni Mark kanina. We're talking about, actually, this is just few, few of the prophecies we have in the Bible about Jesus Christ. So we have on the left, dito, born in Bethlehem, born of a virgin, descendants of David, betrayed for 30 pieces of silver, crucified, first divided his garment, buried in a rich man's tomb, and resurrected. On the second column, makikita natin kung saan siya pinopisay. At on the third column, makikita natin kung saan siya na-fulfilled. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng pinopisay ng mga prophets were fulfilled by Jesus Christ. And the amount of fulfilled prophecies in the Bible and how it was fulfilled can't be considered coincidence. Never. Any scholars, any scientists, any psychologists, wag sasabi sa atin na for you to be prophesied, you will be born on a virgin at ma-fulfilled yun. That's like having a one cent kasi ilalagay mo sa buong Texas tapos hahanapin mo without you knowing kung saan siya nilagay. Gawin na lang natin Pilipinas. Lagay mo sa Pilipinas and hinapin mo sa buong Pilipinas. Sabi mo, may nilagay akong piso. Hanapin mo yung piso kung saan. That's, that's the comparison of this prophecy to be fulfilled by human. It is humanly impossible to fulfill such prophecy with such accuracy. And that's just few. Actually, ang dami ko nga nilagay dyan, nakahide lang eh. <laughs> anyway, so let's talk about historical. So pinag-usapan natin una the history of the Bible and the prophecy. Let's talk about history. So, again, Israel is a nation right now where Jesus uh, came from, right? And Israel's history is actually found in the Bible. Alam nyo ba yun? Even ako na-amaze ako na, wow, ito pala yung nangyari sa Israel. Let's talk about the timeline. Sorry, medyo mahaba yan, pero we will talk about that. So, okay. The first part, gusto ko mag-notice nyo yung first time, the first siege and the third siege. Actually, that was a compressed one. If you, if you can read your Bible in around Daniel 1, you will see that the Israel was captured by Babylonian. Tapos sa loob nun, ang maraming nangyaring politika. Yung Babylonia, may nilagay siyang puppet king. Yung puppet, puppet king, trinaidor yung king ng Babylon. So nakuha ulit ng Egypt yung Israel. Tapos sinakop ulit ng Babylonian. Tapos kinukuha ulit ng Egypt. At the third time, that's the third siege. And then, 70 years after from the first siege, makikita natin that the people of Israel, nakalaya na sila. After 70 years of the first siege. And after that, noong August 16, 516 BC, the whole Israel is desolated. Walang tao po sa Israel. And if you can remember Nehemiah, crying out to the king. King, pabalikin mo ako ng Israel because I will build the wall of Jerusalem. That's 15 years after the desolation. And after that, on May 14, we all know this, this is a history that the Israel restored their nationality. They become again a nation. At kapag aaralan mo, this is already prophesied by Moses. Na yung, kayo mga Israel, if you don't obey your God, and God knew they will not obey Him because of their own selfish desires, this is what will happen to you. And this exactly happened. Pag pumunta ka na yung Israel at tinanong mo sila, sino yung historia ng, historia ng Israel, tapos pag tinanong mo kung ano nangyari, they will tell you exactly the same thing. And it's found in the Bible. Another history about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ's life, death on the cross, and resurrection are historical facts. They are not just merely a story of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Paul, and Barnabas, and other men. Di lang sila gawagawang kwento. They are historical facts. Here you have a man named Josephus Flavius, a Jewish historian who lived around 130 AD. So time siya ni Aristotle, Plato, which we all know it's a part of history, Greek history. Si Josephus Flavius, actually, disciple siya or student siya ni Aristotle. And si Aristotle, pag, trino, pag trinace back mo, it will end up kay Paul. Sa time ni Paul. And here, Josephus Flavius writing down on his 
writings on antiquities, eodice. Here's what he says. Now there was a time of Jesus, a wise man, if he's willful to be called a wise. And Joseph of Flavius, a non-Christian, declared that Jesus Christ is the Christ. And on the last part, sabi niya, for he appeared to them alive again on the third day. Does it sound familiar? That's the story of Jesus Christ in the Bible. And here, a non-biblical evidence saying, ako, si Josephus Flavius, na, na witness ko, sinabi nila sa akin, that there was a man, pangalan niya Jesus, if you can call him a man, and he was the Christ. Remember that Josephus Flavius is a Jewish, and he knew exactly the word Christ, which means the anointed one, which means the Messiah, which is the Savior. So alam ni Josephus Flavius when he said that he was the Christ, that he was the Savior of the world. And he proved that Jesus Christ rose on the third day. Pag umunta tayo sa library actually, kahit sa library, kasang library, or lalo na yung mga Jewish library, you can see you can send these artifacts. And this is just a manuscript, a copy of that uh, original manuscript ni Josephus Fabius. So let's proceed. Now we talk about the historical of evidence of the Israel and the historical evidence of Jesus Christ. So okay, kulang pa. More. Let's talk about more. About historical records in the Bible found in the manuscripts. So pag sinabi nating manuscripts, uh, just to make it simple, that's a writings or copies of the Bible. So for example, pag ako gumawa ng tula, example, gumawa ng tula, ako ay makata, tapos nulat ko, tapos, tapos kino, kinopya ni Johan, after five years, sabi niya, galing naman ni Sherry, nagawa niya yung kinopya niya. Exactly, word by word. Ang ginawa ni Johan is a manuscript. Okay? And pag sinunod naman ni, for example, ng isang tao yung ginawa ni Johan, then that's the other manuscript. And manuscript, and manuscript, and manuscript. And here's the first oldest manuscript we have about the Bible. It's 500 BC. So 2017 plus 500. So 2,500 years ago. Na-discover nila tong silver scroll, which is a fragment. Yung nakikita lang yan sa, sa museum is a fragment of Book of Numbers. Here, the Masoretic text, they discover it archaeologically. Ah. Yung mga tipang binabrush yung bato. Yan. Nakita nila, oh, may script dito. Ah. Tapos nakita nila, and then they... Uh, Translate to Greek, and then that's dated 200 BC. That's 2,200 years ago. A copy of the Bible found 2,200 years ago. Wow. And here you are, another Codex Alexandrius found around AD. Around AD, 180. And more. Let's see more. Papyrus 46, one of the oldest New Testament papyri, or copy, showing... Anong, anong chapter? 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 33 to 12 and 9. And the last one is the Anshal 0177, which is a copy of Luke. And do you know how many manuscripts we have in the, about the Bible? We have 50,000 plus, 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 plus manuscript in the Bible, about the Bible. One of the ancient texts or ancient literature is Homer. Sino familiar kay Homer? So if you're a fan of reading, you know the, the literature Homer. And you know what? Ilang copy lang meron si Homer? 600. Wala man lang sa kumakalingkingan ng 50,000 plus, 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 plus. Diba? And that's, that's only proved to us that historically men are preserving the Bible. Sandali, sabi mo, she, wait lang. Eh, sagsulat nun si Josephus Flavius, tao, ito, si kung sino man siya, si Alexander. Wait, paano yan? Kasi the original copy of the Bible was written around 3,000 years ago. And the earliest is 2,500 years ago. And may difference na, 500 years. Hindi kaya nagbago na yung sinulat nila. And ito yung, nakaka- ito yung nakakagulat. I'm, I'm, even me, na-amaze ako nung pinag-aaral lang siya. Are you familiar of the Dead Sea Scrolls? Yeah. Ito yung mga jar na marami, tapos may mga scrolls sa loob na nakita nila in the Egypt. Okay. So Dead Sea Scrolls, they found it around 130 AD. 
And again, the earliest Bible is, yung nakita nila is 500 BC. When they compare both of the manuscript, alam nyo gano'ng kataas yung percent accuracy? 99% accurate. Word by word, praise by praise. 99%. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> kahit, kahit ako, kahit ako, hindi ako makapaniwala. Actually, di ginawa nila 99% kasi meron daw misspell words. Alam nyo na misspell words? It's one of the misspell words is Savior. Yung isa, may you. Yung isa, walang you. Even us right now, we don't consider that misspelled, right? That's, sabi nila, European, sabi nila, American. But we understand. So, sinabi nila 99%, parang ako, oh, ibig, ibig sabihin, kahit kama, kahit capital letter, kopyang kopya. And that's how God preserved the Bible. The Bible we have right now, you can be assured and sure that it's 99% accuracy sa original. If you're going to study the Bible on its original text. Let's proceed. Okay, tapos na tayo sa historika. Diba? Medyo dumugo na. The, story, the, the history of the Bible, the history of Jesus, the history of the script and the manuscript. Now, let's talk about scientific. Okay, scientific naman tayo. Sa so, mahilig sa science dito, let's talk about this. About Earth is round. Do you think makakita natin sa Bible that the Earth is round? Yes. But you know, 600 BC, okay, that's 2,600 years ago, the idea that the Earth is circle came from Pythagoras, the one who created the Pythagorean theorem that created the pyramid, what we have right now. And 350 BC, sinuportahan siya ni Aristotle, sabi niya, tama yan, may tama ka best, sabi ni Aristotle. <laughs> and then next, 100 years, and 100 years, and 100 years, sa Aristarchus and Aristoteles, they proved and measured the Earth. That's after 100 and 100 and 100 of years. And we have confound in the Bible, 2,717 years ago, 700 BC, God declared in Kaimiskay Isaiah that He sits in throne above the circle of the earth. 700 BC, 2,700 years ago. Wala pang Pythagorean theorem yan. Wala pang mga scientists na nag-iisip kung earth is round. God already declared to man that the earth is circle. Pag, pag pinag-aralan yung circle, actually, it will talk about spherical globe. That God sits on a spherical earth. Let's proceed. About earth hangs on and sits on nothing. So, ibig sabihin, lumulutang daw yung earth sa, sa space. Actually, other religion believe that the earth nakapatong sa likod ng apat na lipante. This is legit. This is legit. Uh, thousand of years ago, itong pinaniniwalaan nila that the earth is moving sa likod ng elepante at sa likod ng pagong. And the Greek or the Greek mythology believe na ang earth binubuhat ni Atlas. ba? So, si Atlas, hindi lang siya painting. That's exactly a belief of the Greek people. And you know, in the Bible, ah, sorry, in history, we found that discovered in 1475 by Copernicus that the earth is Hanging. So that's like 600 years lang before. Doon pala na-discover nila na lumulutang pala ang earth. But God, 4,017 years ago, panahon ni Job, sinabi niya, He spreads out the northern skies over empty space. He suspends the earth over nothing. Diba? Ako, amazed ako, wow. For, that's, 2,000 BC, 4,017 years ago. Wala pang, hindi ko alam kung anong meron yan sa, sa mundo, but God already declared that the earth is suspending of nothing. Lumulutang ang earth. Last one. Stars are innumerable. Sino dito nag-star, mag-stargazing, tapos binibilang-bilang. Tapos nakabot ng 100, tulog na ako. <laughs> so, stars are innumerable. In 1867 years ago, so 150 AD time, they believe that there are only 3,000 stars in the sky daw. Until, na-discover nila yung telescope, or na-invento yung telescope, on 1608. Doon pala nila nalaman na, wait, pre, mali pala. More than 3,000 yung stars. Hindi lang siya 3,000. Pero hindi pa rin nila mabilang. Until 1920, when Edwin Hubble provide evidence about Milky Way Galaxy. Ginawa ni, ni, ni Edwin, pinakita niya, this is the shape and the form of the Milky Way. And this is just a small stars of the whole universe. 
and the people start to say, we cannot count the stars. It's impossible for us to count the stars. And God said in His Word, 600 BC, 2,617 years ago, in Jeremiah 33, 22, I will make the descendants of David, my servant, and the Levites, who minister before me as countless as the stars in the sky and as measureless as the sand on the seashore. God knew man cannot count the stars. We tried to prove, Nick, bibilangin namin yung God. We tried to prove over years and over years. And at the end, we will say that God is true. That the Bible is true. We cannot count the stars. Believing the Bible to be true and perfect is believing that God is true and perfect. On the other hand, doubting the Bible is doubting God himself. I like what Mark said kanina that now we know that the Bible is true. Now we know that the, we have proven evidence that the Bible is perfect. Then what we believe about Jesus Christ, eternal life, the salvation in His resurrection is not in vain. Our perseverance as Christian, our walk as a Christian is not in vain. That, that they will come, that Jesus Christ will return And we are 100% sure of that because the Bible talks about it. How do we know it's free from errors? First, because the Bible is from God. Second, because the Bible is trustworthy. Because how its contents was preserved and its prophecies were fulfilled and history and science provide evidence. So I, I pray and I hope that after this message, we will have that understanding and that full conviction that the Word of God that we have right now, that we're reading every night and day, is indeed the Word of God Himself to us. And whatever written sa Bible natin, we should obey. So we will have a breakout uh, discussing this question for, I think, 20 minutes. 20 minutes, yeah. And then we will end the, the message. Thank you. Now, na- naalam natin, and we come to understanding that the Bible is 100% true and perfect. Uh, what this is all about for us, if the whole Bible is true, ano ba yung pinaka-central team ng Bible? And we all know that that the redemptive plan of God for man through the death of Jesus Christ on the cross and His resurrection is the central theme of the whole Bible. So if there's one reason that we will read and obey God's Bible, God's commandment and God's word, it's because of Jesus Christ. Because we want to know more about God, we want to know more about Jesus, and we want to be like Jesus Christ. So our application not just knowing all those alam yan, historical and scientific facts about information about the Bible, but we want to end up this truth transforming our, our lives. So how should we respond on this? First, we should worship God for His greed. If all those truths na narinig natin from Mark and sa mga alayan will not compel us or move us to bend on our knees and just worship God on how great He is, Imagine the creator of that great universe just revealed himself to you and me. That great God who gave us eternal life, who, give, who redeemed us from the eternal punishment, just revealed himself to us through his word and through Jesus Christ. We should worship God with all our heart. We should love God with all our heart. Hindi lang, love ko si God pag okay ako, or love ko si God pag may kailangan ako. No. The Bible is there either through thick and thin, high, high seasons or low seasons of your life, the Bible is there. And the truth that God gave us to, to us, hindi siya mawawala. So at all times of our life, we should worship God and praise His name. Of course, we should read our Bible. Diba? Kung, kung ikaw yung medyo may doubt pa na, wait, di ko kasi magets yung Deuteronomy sa kanumbers eh. Uh, ang labo niya, parang ang puro, puro donat, 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 donat. And now you've seen 
sa, sa, sa message that even that yung malabong part na hindi mo naintindan is true and perfect. You should read your Bible. We should read our Bible and know our great God. If we want to know about our God and His character, His attributes, His plan, is our, our direction, our future, we should always open our Bible. Diba? Kung nakakapag-open nga tayo ng mga uh, TV natin na sinusundo natin yung mga seasons na mga ano natin. And that's, dapat, the Bible should be on the top. Nag-Lord, gusto ko malaman eh, kita sa chapter 1 pa lang ako ng attributes mo eh. Gusto ko na chapter 2 na ako, Lord, ano next season ko, ano next season ko sa'yo. And that should be our heart. That should be our heart. Hindi lang na, wait, may problema ako sa open yung Bible. Oh, the Lord revealed to me. No, it's not that. We should always, in the morning, Lord, What's your word for me? Lord, anong gusto mo i-reveal sa akin ngayon? And lastly, we should obey our Bible. Everything that is in our Bible, we should obey. All God's commandment. Hindi lang yung mga tipong, ito, siguro kaya ko, ito, medyo hindi ko pa feel, hindi ko muna susundin. No, it's not that. Everything in the Bible, all God's commandment, we should obey. If we truly love God, if we truly believe God, If we truly owe and respect and honor God, we will obey all of His commandment. If there's something that mahirap para sa atin i-obey, then we should ask God, Lord, mahirap i-obey, mahirap sundin yung word mo for me. Lord, help me, give me the strength, give me the courage to obey your word. Because binigay ni God yung mga rules, not just alam yan, para maging KJ si God, na okay, ayaw akong magsaya ka. No, that's not our God. We, he loves us so much that He wants us to be disciplined. He knows na pag inayaan tayo ni God, ang gagawin natin, magpapariwara tayo, we'll just enjoy this life, we'll just spend our life on uh, nonsense things. And God doesn't want that because He loves us so much. That He gave us the guidance, gave us the command, He gave us the rules so that our life will be according to Him. We'll be glorifying Him. That Jesus Christ Himself will be sin to our life. We will be the salt and light of this world. So, knowing the Bible is true and our deep motivation to read the Bible and to live it out is to know Jesus more and more to be like Him. So I hope we learn tonight about the true and living God that we have and His words. I hope that our perspectives towards our Bible, the Word of God, changes. That this will make us, the Bible, the ultimate source of our life. Let's pray. Father, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for this night that you have given us. Lord, salamat po, Lord. Salamat, Lord, of your faithfulness, Father God. Lord, all throughout the years, Father God, that you have given to us, Lord, people, Paulit-ulit nila, Lord, they tried to put out your word, God. But you promised that the earth will fade away, but your word will still remain, O oh God. Third, I just pray, Father God, that our lives will be changed, Lord. Inside out, Father God, that we will be more like Jesus Christ. That we will love other people, even those unlovable, Father God. Even our enemy, because you commanded us to love your enemy, and we will obey because we know that's true and that's from you. Oh God, thank you so much, Lord, because of your grace and mercy, Father God. And because of our sins and transgression, Father God, we are not even any percent of worthiness, Lord, sa'yo. But Lord, your grace, Father God, is sufficient and amazing, Father God, that a sinner like us, Father God, you love us first, Lord. Lord, I just pray, Lord, we pray, Father God, that tonight we will scan our Bible, your word, Father God, and we will look out for your commandments, Father God, and we will, with whole heart, Lord, with full devotion and with full passion, Father God, obey your command, Lord. Lord, kahit mahirap, Lord, kahit hindi namin maintindan, Lord, if that's your command, Father God, and we know and we love you, we will obey, Father God. Lord, thank you so much for your word. Lord, thank you so much for speaking to us tonight, Father God. And Lord, we just offer to you our lives and offer to you all the glory, honor, and praise, Father God. This all we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.